So in Gen 1, psychic types were, alongside normal types, absolutely overpowered. Psychics constituted a good chunk of the OU tier, at 38% to be exact, and were some of the Pokemon with the highest attack stat, like Alakazam having a 135 special attack stat, or Executor having a 125 special attack stat. Psychic in particular was very overpowered because of three reasons. Type charts, the moves, and the stats. Psychics, as we all know, have three weaknesses, Bug, Ghost, and Dark. And back in Gen 1, Dark didn't exist. And because of a coding error, Psychic types were immune to Ghost. So in a much more practical sense, it had no weaknesses. That's because in Gen 1, there was a total of four bug type moves, where only three of them were actually damaging moves, and the most powerful one was Leech Life at an 80 base power. And the only Pokemon with access to Leech Life were Pokemon who were just down by Terrapole. The Pokemon with the highest ranking who has access to it was Venomoth, and Venomoth has a physical attack set at 65, so he was not going to be doing a lot of damage. Essentially, even a Pokemon like Executor, who had a four times weakness to bug, didn't need to worry about that weakness. So psychic types were basically invincible back then. So what could go wrong? Well, then Gen 2 happened. Dark types and Steel types weren't exactly the same as fairies back then, in the sense that when fairy was introduced, I remember people talking about the fact that fairy might be the best type. And while the dark type did help balance the fact that the psychic type was very OP, dark type Pokemon themselves were a bit lackluster. There was a total of 6 dark type Pokemon introduced in Gen 2, that was Tyranitar, Umbreon, Houndoom, Hondor, Murkrow, and Sneasler. Two of those Pokemon were indeed good, that would be Tyranitar and Umbreon. Tyranitar was a great Pokemon and for the longest time was the best dark type Pokemon, but wouldn't exactly reach its peak until Gen 3. Similarly, Umbreon was really good with that huge 130 base special defense stat and was used as an excellent wall and the remaining four dark type Pokemons were NU or lower with the exception of Houndoom, who was in UBL. So sad for the Psychic type, sure, but it doesn't exactly explain how Psychics have fallen so low. While it wasn't exactly an overabundance of amazing dark type Pokemon that started the downfall, because it was really just Tyranitar and Umbreon versus the world, but a move. That move being Pursuit. Pursuit was at the time a special move that would deal 40 base damage unless the target switches out, and then the power doubles. And that was essentially a death sentence to it. It means that even if you were ever sending out a Psychic type, it would be a liability, since all your opponent has to do is send out a Pursuit user. And not necessarily even a Dark type, just a Pursuit user. So your opponent was presented with the win-win scenario. Either you switched out and get hit with the super effective 80 base power move, or you don't and you get hit by another move. That itself hurt Psychic a lot, and once Gen 4 came along, it turned into a physical move. That meant that Pokemon like Tyranitar were able to benefit more than the Steel type. So Steel types were a new type that resisted Psychic, and the new Steel types that were introduced were Fortress, Garmory, Steelix, Scizor, Magneton, and Magnemite. Unlike Dark, it was obvious since the beginning that Steel was going to be goaded, because it has a total of 11 resistances at that time, and although that number has changed, it's still one of the best types. So there was starting to be a threatening presence as the chance to get dethroned as the best type was becoming a lot more real, even if Steel was sort of the opposite in the sense that instead of an offensive powerhouse, it was a defensive one. There was now an equal amount of Steel and Psychic Pokemon in OU. Skarmory and Scissor, for example, were now not only a threat, but also had access to the move pursuit, and it wasn't uncommon for Fortress to use Hidden Power Ghost, for example, since it was a physical move back then, and you could actually do some damage with that 90 base attacks that Fortress has. So while defensively they were great, offensively they were nothing to scoff at. So the Steel type was in a way the exact opposite of the Dark type in the sense that Dark nerfed Psychic via its moves rather than the Pokemon, and Steel didn't have any remarkable moves since Metal Claw and Iron Tail were rather unreliable, but they had an incredible defensive profile that helped them a lot. Now let's go all the way to Gen 3. Pokemon now have abilities and there's a fun new move on the block called knockoff. Now at this point in time, knockoff has a small 20 base power and is a special move, but we all know that the main reason people use it is because of its side effect, the fact that it knocks off an item. Ever since held items were introduced in generation 2, they have become an integral part of competitive Pokemon, from leftovers which helps you gradually earn back your HP, to choice band to bring out the full offensive potential of your Pokemon, items are evidently very important. There's a lot of thought put into what item you're going to give a Pokemon, so being able to knock it off is great, sure, because of the obvious benefits from it. It tells you a lot about the Pokemon themselves, what moves they may run, and your opponent's team as a whole. Then afterwards in Gen 6, it was buffed from to 20 base power to 65 base power, with a 1.5 boost if the target obviously has an item. Now, because of the benefits that I stated, everyone is looking to have this move, which means that even though it wasn't exactly the main intention, Psychic types, who this move is obviously super effective against, are suffering even more now. Now, flash forward to Gen 4, 
another move was introduced, U-Turn, which I've talked about extensively on this channel. I feel like U-Turn isn't discussed nearly enough when talking about the downfall of psychic types, but I personally feel like it is, and I feel like it had a lot to do with it. With the relevance of U-Turn, psychic type Pokemon had another move with the good offensive distribution to watch out for, so no tier was safe. And the fact that people were running it because it became a defining move in the metagame was an accidental side effect, sure, but it was just another L that psychic had to take. It was another very common move that they constantly had to be on the lookout for. Then, Generation 6 came along, with a new almost OP Dark type legendary being introduced, and the new Fairy type being introduced. Now this section, I will admit, since it is a bit more speculative, hear me out, it doesn't take much to notice how similar the Fairy type and Psychic type are conceptually. They're almost interchangeable. For example, would you think it was weird if Clefable was not a Fairy type but a Psychic type? or if Dazzle and Gleam was a psychic type move, or if Espeon was a fairy type. Needless to say, there is a bit of overlap. Generally, it's pretty evident that fairy outclasses its stab-wise. On top of that, the mere existence of fairy type Pokemon made this steel type that much more relevant, which isn't great for psychic types because that's a type that it's not very effective against. You know, because the steel type really needed that extra boost. Also, fairy is evidently much more of a specially offensive type rather than a physically offensive type. Sure, play ref exists, but fairies are usually more on the special side. Pokemon like Xerneas, Diancie, Hatterene, Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, and Tapu Fini are all special attackers and notable fairy types. It not necessarily replaced it, but more one-upped it as a strong specially offensive type that threatens fighting types, and not only that, but is super effective against Stark, the same type that Psychic is weak against. Even moves like Reflect and Light Screen, which are some of the best that Psychic has to offer, were one-upped with fairy type moves like Aurora Veil, which sets up both of them in one turn. So both conceptually and when it comes to type characteristics, fairy is better. Now flash forward to generation 8. The unthinkable happened, and pursuit was banned. The move that practically started it all was banned. Was this maybe a turning point for the psychic type? Was it gonna go back to its original glory? Well no, this was a positive, but it was the first significant win in almost 20 years. And during that time, lots of great dark and ghost Pokemon were introduced, and even now in Gen 9, let's look at the metagame. Currently, 4 of the top 10 most used Pokemon in OU are ghost or dark. There is one psychic type out there, so congratulations to Galarian Sloking who's literally just holding down the fort, but other than that, Psychic isn't incredibly notable. And lastly, I want to address the misconception. For a while, I think that Psychic types got a lot more grace, and people were under the impression that it wasn't as bad as a type because of the fact that lots of legendaries and mythicals are Psychic types. The Psychic type before the existence of the Fairy type sort of encompassed what the Fairy type is today, which is the sort of mystical-themed Pokemon or Fairy-type-themed Pokemon. For example, Pokemon like Celery, the Lake Trio, Cresselia, Victina, Miloetta, or Jirachi all have the Psychic type because of the fact that Psychic is associated with those attributes I was talking about. But the thing is, those Pokemon could all very well be Fairy types. If we look at the Psychic type now, it looks more like a placeholder to Fairy than an actual type. And even all those Pokemon that I just listed off have all fallen off or suck even if they're mythicals. Celebi, in National Dex because it's illegal in the current generation, is RU. The Lake Trio is RU and so is Cresselia. And I know that having a Psychic type isn't the only problem that those Pokemon have, but it sure is part of the problem. So even Psychic type Pokemon that are quote unquote supposed to be strong, suck. In conclusion, the Dark type has just kept getting better and better, Dark and Bug type moves have become more and more relevant in bio to competitive singles, and the addition of the Fairy type, which is another mainly specially offensive type that threatens fighting just like Fairy but isn't weak to Psychic, and of course the Steel type still out here being the Golden Child and getting better and better, and on top of that, has only kept on being more relevant because it's a way to keep fairy in check, all seem to be relevant factors on why the psychic type has fallen so low. Psychic type has not only gotten worse, but it also seems like it's lost its identity. If there's a role that psychic wants to fill, whether it's a specific move or a part of a Pokemon's typing, it can be filled better by fairy or some other type. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that it has had the biggest downfall of any type in competitive singles. But at least they have Esper and she's kinda cute. <laughs>